Thank you for purchasing Magnetospheres, the larger, stickier, 6mm magnetic spheres. Now that you're squishing them around in your hand, you may be wondering, what shapes can I make with Magnetospheres? And how can I combine those shapes to make larger structures or functional items? We hope this video series will help you get the most fun out of your Magnetospheres while helping you learn about the properties of magnetism. As you begin working with spherical magnets of any size, you will notice they have a tendency to crumple into increasingly random messiness. This is an example of entropy. All magnets are constantly seeking the lowest possible energy state. To build order out of chaos, you will need to add energy into the system by creating and assembling temporarily stable magnetic structures. The first step in any construction is pulling the magnets into a strand. This will keep you very busy. Simply begin by kneading the magnets and tugging a small strand into a larger strand. The emerging strand will continuously break away and reconnect as you try to yank the chaotic magnetic system into a higher energy state of order. Just as each magnet has a north pole and a south pole, each strand will have a north and south pole too. You may need to occasionally flip the polarity of your strand or your crumple to allow the magnets to continue connecting in the proper alignment. You can determine the magnetic orientation of your strand with a simple household compass. Slowly approach the compass with your strand and observe the needle's behavior. Your strand's north pole will attract the south pole of the compass, and your strand's south pole will attract the north pole of the compass. In either event, your strand's north will be pointing in the same direction as the red arrow on the compass needle. You can make your magnets more responsive by conditioning your strand with a gentle Lissajou twirl. This scoots the poles of each sphere into better alignment with the poles of its neighbors and results in more stable structures. The most basic stable structure for magnetic spheres is called a helix. Begin by looping a strand around your finger and connect the next loop adjacent to the terminal pole rather than completing the circuit. Gently force another loop into position. After several loops, the structure will be stable enough to allow the strand to wind itself into a continuous circular stack held together with a magnetically parallel offset lateral attraction, which results in a stable hexagonal stacking pattern with the north and south poles separated and unable to reconnect. You will notice the helix resists crumpling and forms a fun squishy tube. You can now use the helix for many tricks, like the engine, the pulley, the gear, the reducing gear, and the helix to cylinder shuffle. In any event, the helix is a tidy way to store your magnetospheres as you prepare for your next project. One of the most difficult yet beautiful structures to attempt with any size of spherical magnet is the hollow sphere, which is analogous to an icosahedron but made of 20 equilateral triangles, 20 equilateral triangle, 20 equilateral triangle. We include a special tool with each set of magnetospheres called the Magneto Card. It will help you measure and cut the basic units you'll need to build just about anything. The card makes it easier to handle the larger 6mm magnetic spheres, and you wouldn't want to use a credit card for this purpose since direct contact with any magnet can erase credit card information. That's why we invented the Magneto Card. Let's start by learning about triangles. Use the card to measure out 9 magnetospheres. Now use the card to cut off that small strand. We have painted the north pole of each magnetosphere in this set to demonstrate the two different types of triangles you will learn to make. By pushing both poles of the strand to the right until they connect, you will create a clockwise loop. Here, the flux travels from each north pole into the south pole of its neighbor, completing a clockwise circuit. By pushing both poles to the left, you will create a counterclockwise loop circuit. You can reverse the spin of any circuit by flipping it over. Now take the loop of nine magnetospheres and pinch one side into an apex while pushing in a flat base on the other side. The nine spheres will naturally orient into an equilateral triangle. Equilateral you may triangle. Need to condition the orientation triangle. of the spheres by gently pinching and jiggling all three sides toward the center. Once you have a stable triangle, you will notice that it too will have either a clockwise or counterclockwise spin. You will need ten clockwise triangles and ten counterclockwise triangles to build an icosahedron so it will help to keep track of this as you pinch your loops. 
After you have all 20 triangles built and separated, take two triangles of opposite spin, line up two of the bases and gently push them together. You will see that the bases stack in a perpendicular alignment of anti-parallel lateral magnetic attraction. If the bases are misaligned or if you accidentally tried to connect two triangles of the same spin, the magneto card allows you to separate the magnets and repair your error. As you get more practice connecting triangles, you will be able to feel the difference between the two types of lateral magnetic attraction and to know in advance whether the connection you are about to make is correct or in error. Now it's time to lay out your magneto net. In geometry, a net is the pattern of in-plane, edge-joined shapes which can be folded to become the faces of a polyhedron. The easiest net for an icosahedron can be thought of as a linear spine of ten triangles, each of which also has a perpendicular wing. Remember that each triangle must have a spin opposite that of its neighbors. This animation illustrates one way of laying out the net. The net can be assembled in any order you choose as long as you end up with a spine of ten plus ten wings. Now start connecting each wing to its neighbors as the structure begins to roll into a three-dimensional matrix. Careful at the end, it gets a little tricky. Congratulations! You have made your first complex geometrical magneto shape. Six millimeter magnetospheres are larger and more sticky than the five millimeter magnetic balls of other leading brands, so any structure you make with them will also be larger and with stronger magnetic integrity. Nonetheless, any hollow sphere is a very delicate structure which will crumple when you squeeze it. And unfortunately, no one will be able to resist squeezing your sphere. When the magnetosphere crumples, the organized system will break down and will continue to progress in the direction of increasing entropy. At this point, repair is hopeless. It's best to start over. Another popular shape to construct is the cube, or six-sided platonic solid. This is trickier than it looks, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be square in no time. The most stable cube is 6x6x6, by six by six, or 216 spheres. Each set of magnetospheres contains 222 spheres, so you'll have six extra spheres to spin it with. Start by measuring out six spheres and bend the strand back on itself to connect to the next six spheres. This uses the anti-parallel lateral magnetic attraction force which results in a perpendicular or square stacking orientation. Now bend the strand back on itself again to connect six more spheres to the emerging sheet. The first few lateral connections are the most difficult as the pockets of repulsion between the adjacent anti-parallel spheres struggle to push the structure apart. Carefully push all four sides of the rectangle together as you build, taking care to repair any repulsive bulges or sliding diagonals as you go. After your sheet is more than six strands long, the structure will become much more stable and you can quickly weave the rest of the strand into the final anti-parallel sheet. Now measure out a six by six square at one end of the sheet and carefully lift and fold that square onto the adjacent 36 spheres. The planes will naturally connect in a perpendicular stacking orientation, which is now anti-parallel in the third dimension also. Now it will be easy to lift the sheet and fold additional layers like a ribbon onto the emerging stack. Careful at the end, it gets a little tricky. Congratulations! You have made a cube, one of the most stable structures you can build, and the shape with the weakest external field. This contrasts greatly with the magneto bone, which is magnetically ferocious, only partly stable, and much more difficult to build. We'll get to the bone in due time. We hope you have enjoyed learning about the helix, the icosahedron, and the cube. Tune in next time and we'll explore the two types of lateral magnetic attraction in greater detail and show you how to construct and combine additional basic shapes and patterns into a very wide variety of magneto structures. For now we'll close with a few pictures sent in by dedicated magnetosphere enthusiasts, our very own fan club of magnets in training for the order of magnitude. As always, Magnetosphere LLC offers a full money back guarantee because we're sure you'll be satisfied with our product. Click on contact at magnetospheres.com to see our easy return policy. Please keep this product and all small magnets away from children under 14. This demonstration video is provided as a public service by magnetospheres.com and any is released artistic or educational non-commercial purpose. Because we believe in the future Just of sharing. Magnetospheres.com and, and is released under a Creative Commons license. Thanks.